महाराज यू आर ऑन म्यूट you remember what is the last verse we did yes 169 169 okay okay yeah okay let's see here looking at the beautiful panchatattva on the same mm -hmm. Okay, um before I start, um just about 15 minutes ago, I sent a uh, a link to a uh video which is a discussion between two doctors and one very expert doctor on vaccines. Um it's about an hour long and it's interesting enlightening and i think everyone should take time and listen to it that will help you to clearly understand what's happening in the in the world with this medical uh situation with the viruses and with the vaccines this this lady who speaks she's a doctor for so many years expert and uh, very sober in the way she presents her knowledge um it's quite enlightening there are times in the, there she gets a little into the technical medical aspects of the uh, vaccine if you can somehow or other if you can listen to it may not understand all of it but as it goes on everything becomes clear and towards the end the end is really some the most interesting and most enlightening part of the whole presentation so i suggest everyone who is on my conference i send it on the conference and i also send it to some devotees directly uh please take time one hour out of your day it's worth it and may save you a lot of trouble in the future having this information available okay so we'll begin and continue with our presentation on the discussion now we have remember we'll do a little recap at this particular point but before we do that we have to honor and we should honor the great souls and the lord om gyan timiranda syakena jana salakaya chaksu unnalitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swayam kadanti kam मा ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्री मक्ति भक्ति विदंत स्वामी की नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवानि पुचारिने निर्विशेषः सुन्यवादि पश्यत्ये देहि सतारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री द्वैत गदाधर श्री वासुदेव गौर भक्त विन्दम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि हरि हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वंशे कल्पते रूपस्य विपसिन्दु पेवचापतितारं पावनेव्यो वैष्णवेव्यो नमः नमः ऑल एक्चुअली वी आर ऑन वर्स 169 नॉट 170 ओके सो गो बैक टू द प्रीवियस वर्स नाउ अ लिटिल रीकैप ऑफ द डिवोटीज were inspired by the lord chaitanya after he came back from gaya receiving initiation from ishwara puri uh to uh, and into a into devotional activity the lord following the protocol of society and of the principles of devotion accepted initiation expect and accepted a bona fide spiritual master after he came back he started to institute the sankirtan movement and then when he did there was resistance 
coming from some Muslims, but mostly from the smart Brahmanas, uh, those the Hindus that are very ritualistic and do not really follow uh, the essence of spirituality. They're more into the rules and regulations of Karmakanda. They complained to the ruling head, which was John Kazi at the time, and he came, threatened, beat a few, beat the devotees, and broke a drum, and warned anyone if they do it again, the repercussions will be greater. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he became like, like Lord, like Rudra, at the time of dev this devastation, and you know because the Lord has come to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement. And now this ruling person is trying to stop it. And so the Lord organized Harinam Sankirtan in a big way, so much so that millions, and this is true, not only from the local area, but people came from everywhere, including other planets, by the grace of the Lord and by the by the wish of the Lord to engage in Harinam Sankirtan. So, um, and of course, now they, they marched on the Kazi's house in a very angry mood, many of them. And they broke the Kazi's house and his garden. And now the Kazi comes out on the request of Lord Chaitanya to discuss some religious principles. The Lord is very cordial. The kind Kansi, the Kasi feels very relaxed. He's not intimidated so much more by what's happening, and he's talk, they're talking. And the Lord poses the question about cow killing. Why in your scriptures do you sanction the killing of your mother, the cow, your father, the bull? And so um Uh, then discussion goes back and forth, and this is what we've been doing for the last 20 verses. So we're, we're right in the middle now where the Lord is putting forth arguments based on scripture, and the Kazi is trying to counteract with his own scripture, but now seeing, admitting defeat, he admits that his own scriptures are not logical and philosophical. And this is where we begin from this point here. So, Tumeye Kahila Pandita Se Satya Hoi Adunikar Amar Shastra Vichara Saya Noi. My dear Nimai Pandit, what he have said is all true. Our scriptures have developed only recently, and they are certainly not logical and philosophical. So, he's admitting his own scriptures are not. And so purport, the Shastras of the Yamanas or meat eaters are not eternal scriptures. They have been fashioned recently and sometimes they contradict one to one another. The scriptures of the Old Testament Quran, these have been piled recently and they are not eternal like Vedic knowledge. Therefore their arguments are not very reasonable and not very sound and people in advanced in science of philosophy deem these scriptures unacceptable. Some Christian priests come to us and inquire, why are you, why are our followings neglecting our scriptures and accepting yours? But when we tell them your Bible says do not kill, then why are you killing so many animals daily? They cannot answer. Some of them imperfectly answer that the animals have no soul, but then we ask them, how do you know that animals will have no soul? Animals and children are of the same nature. Does this mean that children also have no soul? So then Prabhupada goes on to describe, um, according to Vedic scriptures, within the body is the owner of the body, the soul. Go down the page. And then, of course, because the soul is within the body, the body changes, and so here. So the Kazi admitted that while talking with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Kazi was a very intelligent person. He had full knowledge of his position, as stated in the following 
verses. So I'll just sidetrack by saying, was as I was listening to Srila Prabhupada this morning, he was in New York, and uh, one young man came up to him and said, well, I'm a Christian, and I follow Christianity. And Prabhupada said to him, now that this is their first meeting, Prabhupada said, you're not a Christian. The man was kind of shocked and said, how can you say that? Do you eat meat? Yes. Therefore, you're not a Christian. Because as it says in your scriptures, thou shall not kill. So if you eat meat, you are sanctioning killing, although you might not do it directly. Indirectly, you're propagating the killing business by um, becoming a customer of dead animals in order for you to enjoy some low form of sense gratification. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, although we, ex we re respect all other religious movements, but we see that there are some flaws within their practice, within their doctrines. <laughs> okay, next. Kalpita Amara Shastra Amasa Bajani Jata Araro De Tabu Se Shastra Mani. I know that our scriptures are full of imagination and mistaken ideas. Yet, because I'm a Muslim, I accept them for the sake of my community, despite their insufficient support. Mm -hmm. Sahaja Yavana Shastri Adridya Vichara Hasiteha Mahaprabhu Puchena Aravara. The reasoning and arguments in the scriptures of the mediators are not very sound. The Kazi concluded, upon hearing this statement, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled and inquired from him as follows. <laughs> Ara eka prashna kare suni to me mama Yatar kahibe chale na vanchi be ama. My dear maternal uncle, maternal uncle, I wish to ask you another question. Please tell me the truth. Do not try to cheat me with tricks. Tomara nagara hoi sada sankirtana. Vadya Gita Kolahala Sangita Nartana. In your city, there in your city there is always congregational chanting of the holy name, a tumultuous uproar of music, singing and dancing, is going on. Tumikaji Hindu Dharma Viroda Aki. Adikari Ebi Ye Na Karamana Bujihite Napar. As a Muslim mass magistrate, you have the right to oppose the performance of Hindu ceremonies. But now you do not forbid them. I cannot understand the reason why. The Lord's taking the opposite one. Kajibale Sahi Tomaya. Bale Gora Hari, Sei Nama Ama Tumare, Sabudana Kari, the Kasi said, Everyone calls you Gorhari. Please let me address you by that name. Suna Gora Hari, a Prashnera Karana, Nibritya Hoi Yari Tabe, Kari, Nibridana. Kindly listen, O Gorhari. If you come to a private place, I shall then explain the reason. Tabai Bali e loka amara antaraga hoya sputakari kahi tumi nakari baya. The Lord replied, All these men are my confidential associates. You may speak frankly. There's no reason to be afraid of them. 
Kaji kahi yabi ami hindura gargia kirtana kari lu mana verdanga bagia se rate eki simha mahaba bayakara bayankara naradeha simha muka garjaye vistara. So here nice now we're going to get into a, a hold up with another thing. The Kazi said, when I went to the Hindu's house, broke the drum and forbade the performance of congregational chanting. In my dreams that very night, I saw a greatly fearful lion roaring very loudly, his body like a human being's and his face looked like a lion's. Sahane amara uparar lapidi achari atta atta hasa kara danta kamamade. While I was asleep, the lion jumped on my chest, laughing fiercely and gnashing his teeth. Mora buka nahadiya gora swaha swara bale padimu tomara buka verdanga badale. Placing its nails on my chest, the lion said in a great voice, I shall immediately bifurcate your chest as you broke the Murdunga drum. So we all, I want just in one point. The Murdunga drum is not simply an instrument. It's much more than that. It's the manifestation of the energy of Lord Balaram incarnated to assist the Lord in his mission of spreading the holy name. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in, I'm sorry, when Krishna was in the spiritual world, he spoke to the flute. He said, my dear flute, I'm sorry, in this particular incarnation of my descent, you will not be able to accompany me. And the flute became very unhappy. So the flute devised a way. So the flute, is also a living being. So he was able to transfer himself into the Murdanga drum and therefore get the association of the Lord. So the Lord's flute became the Murdanga drum in Lord Chaitanya's Leela. That's mentioned in uh, Mahatmya, what is it? Uh, Navadvik Mahatmya by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Mora kirtanana manakari karimu taraka ishaya anki muda kampa ami panabada baya. You have forbidden the performance of my congregational chant chanting, therefore I must destroy you. Being very much afraid of him, I closed my eyes and trembled. <laughs> That's Lord Nishringade making his appearance. Bitte deki simha bali haiya sadaya tora shika tika kaya lu tora para jaya. Seeing me so afraid, the lion said, I have defeated you just to teach you a lesson, but I must be merciful to you. Sayadina bahuta nahi kalile upata. Tana shamakari na karina pranagata. On that day, you did not create a very great disturbance. Therefore, I have excused you and not taken your life. Achiyata punakari tavena samhinu swamase tomadamari yavana nasimu. But if you perform such activities again, I shall not be tolerant. At that time, I shall kill you, your entire family, and all the meat eaters. <laughs> this is Lord Nishringadev. He gets right to the point. Ekakahi simagela amara haila baya edaka naka chinna mora vidaya. After saying this, the lion left but I was very much afraid of him. Just see the marks of his nails on my heart. So now the Kazi opens up his shirt and shows the chest marks. 
e bata kancha nija buka deka haila suni deki sarva loka aschaya manila. After this description, the Kasi showed his chest, having heard him and seen the marks, all the people there accepted the wonderful incident. Kaji kahi hiyamaya karana kahila se dina amara eka vidaya aila. So one thing I should mention that Lord, Lord Nishringadev is specifically incarnated in this age to protect the Sankirtan movement. So devotees don't have to fear the demons when we do Sankirtan because we are protected by Lord Nishringadev. And Lord Chaitanya has inaugurated the Sankirtan movement as the means to purify the heart, to purify the world. And that is his desire to spread his holy name, Krishna's holy name, everywhere. Kaji kaha iha maha karana kahila Sayidina mara eka pidaya aila Kaji continued, I did not speak to anyone about this incident. But on that very day, one of my orderlies came to see me. After coming to me, the orderly said, when I went to stop the congregational chanting, suddenly, my, suddenly flames struck my face. Pudila Sakadara Mukahaila Varna Rana Ye Payeda Yaya Tara E Vivarana. My beard was burned and there were blisters on my cheek. Every orderly who went gave the same description. Tahag Keha Rahino Muni Mahabhaga Pana Kirtananana Varjiya Gara Rahuta. Rasiya. After saying this, I was very much afraid. After seeing this, I was very much afraid. I asked them not to stop the congregational chanting, but to go sit down at home. Tabite Nagara Haibe Swachana Kirtana Sumi Saba Mlecha Asa Kaila Nivadana. Then all the mediators, hearing that they would be restricting, and they would be re hear, hearing that hearing that there would be unrestricted congregational chanting in the city, came to submit the petition. Nagara Hindara Dharma Madile Apara Hari Hari Dwani Bai Nahi Suna Ara. The religion of the Hindus has increased unlimited. There are always vibrations of Hari Hari. We do not hear anything but this. Aram Chikahi Hindu Krishna Krishna Bali. Asa kanda nacha gaya gadi yaya duli. One mediator said, the Hindus say, Krishna, Krishna, and they laugh, cry, dance, chant, and fall on the ground, smearing their bodies with dirt. Hari, 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 Kari, Hindu, Kara, Kola, Hala, Patasaha Suni Le, Tomara Kari Beka Bala, vibrating Hari Hari. The Hindus make a tumultuous sound. If the king hears it, certainly he will punish you. <laughs> so there's a purport here, and it describes a little bit of the history who were the different rulers at the time before Lord Chaitanya and during Lord Chaitanya here. 
So then it takes you up in the very last sentence. It says here, this king also was very cruel. He committed many atrocities against the Vaishnavas. So that's the history. As a result of sinful activities, one of his servants from the Koja group killed him while he was praying in the mosque. Okay, so yeah. Tabeye Yavanere Tami Te Puchila Hindu Kahari Bala Tara Swabhava Swabhava Janila. I then inquired from the Yavanas. I know that these Hindus by nature chant Hari Hari. Tumita Yavana Hane Kena Anu. Anuksanam Hindura Deva Tara Nama Laha Ki Karana. The Hindus chant the, Hari, the name Hari because that is the name of their God. But you are Muslim meat eaters. Why do you chant the name of the Hindu gods? Malaychakaha Hindue Amekara Padhi Hasa Keya Keya Krishna Dasa Keya Rama Dasa. The meat eater replied, sometimes I joke with the Hindus. Some of them are called Krishna Das and some are called Ram Das. <laughs> Keha Hari Dasa Sabha, Keha Hari Dasa Sada, Bali Hari Hari, Jani Kari Gari Dana, Kari Beka Churi. Some of them are called Haridas. They always chant Hari Hari. And thus I thought they would steal the riches from someone house, from somebody's house. Interesting little statement here. Another meaning of Hari Hari is I am stealing. I am stealing. So it's also mentioned that Krishna is called Hari. And the reason why he says he's called Hari is because he takes away all your attachments. He steals away those things that you consider important, but are actually not. Say hoite jiva mora bala hari hari itcha nahi tabu male bale ki upaya kari. Since that time, my tongue also always vibrates the sound hari hari. I have no desire to say it, but still my tongue says it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. So Prabhupada goes on. And the, un the unbelievers, you know, not understanding the holy name, they make fun and they joke of, about us. And the even in joking, if they do, they get benefit. That is called Nama Bas. The chanting in the stage of Nama Bas, it's better than Nama Parad and awakens supreme remembrance of Vishnu. And then one becomes free from material enjoyment. So you can see how beneficial it is for anyone to chant the holy name. Even if they do it jokingly, derisively, accidentally, well, fearfully, they get benefit. Then they come closer to Krishna. Okay, okay. so let's see where. Um, well, this pastime ends at verse 226. So we will stop here and do the remaining verses tomorrow because some of them have some sizable purports and see if there are any questions. So what we're hearing here is the power of the Sankirtan. It's not simply a group of people singing and dancing God's name. It's actually something that is highly empowered by the Lord Himself. Goloka Prema Dana Harinam Sankirtana Matin Jan Milo Kene Upai. So, this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is originating in the spiritual world. It's descended in this material world in order to show compassion and mercy to the fallen souls who are lost. 
thinking that sense gratification is the goal of life. So it's a mercy manifestation of the Lord. It's empowered by the Lord. It's performed by the Lord. And it's encouraged that everyone take up this chanting. Anyone who does, even accidentally or jokingly, receives benefit. And those who chant with full consciousness, they receive supreme benefit. One who's chanting the holy names of the Lord is free from the effects of the material energy and is protected by, uh, completely protected by the mercy of Krishna. And that, of course, that is the, what we say, fringe benefit. To get protection from the holy name is the fringe benefit of chanting. Mm -hmm. The real benefit of the holy name. The real benefit of the holy name is to awaken our attraction for Krishna. <laughs> and ultimately develop that attraction to the stage of affection. Okay, so we'll stop here. I hope you're enjoying this particular presentation on Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. I think a very good nectar for purifying our heart before appearance of Nityananda and also Varadev tomorrow. And uh, gives us like a bit more confidence now to go for Harinam boldly. <laughs> so thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions or any comment, please uh, unmute yourself. Or if you would like to type in chat window, then I can read on your behalf. Thank you. I can see one comment from Roberto Prabhu. I think it's a comment, not a question, probably. He's saying, thank you very much for your mercy, Gurudev. I, I learned that nothing can stop the plan of Lord and that Narsingha Dev was also in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I will just try to be an instrument under your loving guidance, your small servant, Roberto. I will tell you exactly what Lord Chaitanya told the Korma Brahman. He said, by my command, be guru, save the land. Anyone you meet, tell them about Krishna. Anyone you meet, teach them the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said, if you do this, he said to the Korma Brahman, you will never lose my association. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, first of all, Maharaj, I would like to thank you uh, for these discourses over the past a few days. Uh, it has been absolutely lovely uh, to hear them and also get inspired uh, with the holy name and the faith and to actually do Nagar Sankirtan. Um, I have a question uh, from today's uh, verse, the last one where Srila Prabhupada says that even accidentally or jokingly, if somebody recites, uh, utters the name of Krishna, then they get the benefit. It is Nama Bhas. But Maharaj, does that still apply to people who have uh, enmity and envious mentality and they chant? Oh, yeah. They, even even the same? Is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If they chant without offense, that means if they, they're not, in other words, there are people who chant derisively in deriding the devotees, there's benefit in that too. That is one of the uh, principles of Agyata Sukriti. There's four, jokingly, accidentally, derisively, and I can't remember the, the other one. It's actually a verse 
where it describes these four ways that a person will benefit. Just like Prabhupada says that the holy name is so powerful, negligently, thank you. The, the holy name is so powerful, he describes one incident, and this incident is mentioned in the Nectar Devotion, where one uh, Muslim, he was being attacked by a boar. And while he was being attacked, he was yelling out in Islamic language, the word abominable. Now, abominable in the Islamic language is haram, H-A-R-A-M, haram. So he took two words and made it one, Hari Rama, and made it haram by his own language. And it mentions that, you know, he got liberation. Although he was killed by the boar, it mentioned in the Nectar Devotion that he received liberation because he chanted without offense. That's the thing, that's the difference between effective chanting and non-effective chanting. When we chant with offense, we get very little benefit from it. So a lot of these times that when people chant either derisively or negligently, jokingly, accidentally, they get benefit because they're doing it not, it's, it's offenseless, it's simply done in, as a natural expression. <laughs> So that's Nama Bas. That's the mercy of the Holy Name. Thank you, Maharaj. Now, I should mention one thing. We have a tendency, those of us who are brought up in the, uh, you know, the uh, Indian culture, to give our names to our children, which are names of Krishna. <laughs> So when you are given your name, you, sometimes you call your child by his name. You call her Radharani or Krishna like that. You're making advancement just by calling them. And that's why these names are there. That one can actually benefit Although they're not calling the Supreme Lord, they're calling someone who by their name, they get some benefit from that. Now you have to be careful how you speak that name because if you chastise your son or daughter and you use the name in the wrong way, <laughs> you, you may also get some reaction for that. It's like if your son's name is Krishna and you say, Krishna, you're so stupid. You call your son and say that, you know. Then you have to be careful when you, when you say that. <laughs> you shouldn't say that. So therefore, you, you, you don't want to use the, the Lord's name when you're speaking to your children or to a relative in a uh, chastising or a mean-spirited way. So there's, there's definitely benefit. Anytime you can, just like there are people who go around painting faces on, you know, many of the Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you can unmute yourself, please. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Gurudev. Thank you so much for uh, reminding us of the importance and the power of our movement, the Sankirtan movement. We know as devotees that this is the prime movement for benediction of 
the whole human society and indeed, indeed the entire world. But how do we present this to people in the street? I mean, they're just walking around doing their thing and you know, and even if I um, say something like, you know, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you know, chanting the Holy Name is beneficial, they're going to look at you as though you're crazy. How do you make the context to have that conversation and, and help people to hear about Krishna? And you can do that in a number of ways. Of course, you can do, you can join a group of devotees doing Sankirtan, which is the most effective way. And then have people passing out flyers on the side or some mantra cards. Or you can also just go out with mantra cards yourself or maybe some invitation to a temple, which includes the chanting of the holy names on the invitation. Yeah. Just to go up to speak to people and is not the way to really make any headway. You're only going to meet resistance. You have to have a way to present that is somewhat uh, unintrusive, but at the same time effective. Best to do it in a group. If you do it by yourself, then the only thing you can really do is take a pair of car towels, find some place in the park or somewhere and start chanting and then have some cards and flyers there. People come by, they can take like that. Or you can have a second person distribute them while you're you know, chanting. Yes, this is this is very good. At least few people going together. I think that is uh, the key. Getting um, a few people to join in, then uh, that will make it more effective and more uh, powerful. Attractive. Attractive also. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our Lord is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, this class today, uh, it really, really made me uh, think about uh, one thing that uh, I remember when, when I first heard that uh, uh, there are some, uh, some actions which even though uh, if, we know, if we don't know that uh, they are sinful, they still have the bad effect. For example, like uh, if I don't know that it's, it's a simple uh, uh, act to eat meat, but I eat meat, even though um, then I, I get the, the bad uh, reaction. But on the other hand, um, uh, you mentioned now that uh, when someone um, chants the, the holy name uh, in uh, like jokingly or something like that, and uh, and that is namabas, which is uh, better than, uh, for example, if I'm I'm chanting uh, as a devotee, but uh, but uh, I I don't uh, don't properly hear what I what I chant. So it may be that some strangers chanting who who is uh, not a devotee of uh, of Krishna, it it might be better and. Um, uh, mm. Well, because they're innocent, because they're they're speaking without any any kind of preconceived notion of what they're doing. It's it's just I'll give you an example. Um, you might be able to relate to this. A lot of times when people come, new people, very new people, maybe first time, they walk into the temple. They see the devotees. They, they smell the, the nice air, atmosphere, the incense. They smell the prasadam. 
you see the deities, you hear the kirtan, they actually, many of them have ecstatic experiences because there's no preconceived notion of anything. They simply walk in you know, as a blank slate and because they're a blank slate, they get, they get a very powerful effect. Then when these same people stay and become, they start practicing, then they wonder after a while, where is that happiness we had at the beginning? And so people you would mistakenly say, well, Krishna does that at the beginning just to attract you. Now you have to work for it. That's not correct. <laughs> what happens is because later on we start seeing things materially, ordinary, both the devotees, ordinary, the activities, we, we lose that innocence, that openness. Therefore, it doesn't have the same effect. Therefore, we have to go back to that consciousness that allows us to be receptive to Krishna's mercy. And that comes through the practice, then it becomes fixed. Those who experience it at the beginning and have an ecstatic experience, they're not, they're, it doesn't last. It's just something that happens due to the fact that they were in the right mood of receptivity being explode, exposed to the spiritual energy. So, but now after learning and practicing, then we have to follow carefully. Once those experiences return in terms of our advancement in devotional service, then they're no longer experiences. They're simply different uh, levels of our development of a con our consciousness now. You see the point? It's, very, uh, it's very interesting, actually, because, um, yes, as you mentioned, that uh, devotees used to say that this is that uh, Krishna at first uh, gives some taste. I, I also heard that. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, the reason is actually di di uh, different. Yeah, completely uh, different. Yeah, this, this has been discussed by many senior devotees. It's not like... I'm just saying this, you know. Mm -hmm. This is well, this is the conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, I I also had uh, another thought, but I I don't know if it's a speculation or, or not. That um, the difference between uh, between like these uh, uh, scenes and uh, and uh, their uh, reaction and the, be between chanting is that. Actually, in uh, in these sinful activities, when we get uh, the bad reaction, it's just about karma. But uh, when we chant the holy name, we actually, as you mentioned, that we want to establish a loving relation relationship, and there has to be uh, some desire to establish this relationship. Yeah. So there has yeah. to be consciousness. Yeah, it's active. Devotional service is an active effort to serve the Lord, to develop our relationship with the Lord. It's a conscious, it's called Krishna consciousness. Yeah, actually we are so lucky that, uh, that uh, because the, the holy name is, is, is the most powerful uh, thing and, and uh, that uh, it's actually our choice uh, that uh, if we take it seriously or not. So it's mm -hmm. not just a matter of fortune or... Good, yeah. good, yeah. Well, if we don't take it seriously, we won't get... We will miss the opportunity. Devotional service is very serious. It's a matter of going back to the spiritual world or staying in this material world life, and life after life. Here's the opportunity. It's like, uh, there's an old, there's a story. It's kind of like a little, uh, what they call it, antidote. Is that there's a blind man and he's in jail. And uh, 
and he has a chance to get out. Uh, he puts his hands on the outer wall and he has to walk along the outer wall with his hands until he comes to the opening. As soon as he comes to the opening, he can get out. So as he's going around the wall, putting his hands one after another, moving around, when he comes close to the opening, a fly goes on his face and that distracts his attention. And then he uh, takes, he puts his attention on the fly and he misses the, the opening. And then he keeps going after that and he's still going on the wall. So every time it's about time to, for him to get out, some distraction comes and he pays the attention to the distraction. So yeah, we have a chance to get out, but we have to pay attention. <laughs> yes, it's uh, so important. But uh, can you uh, say something about how we can avoid that uh, while uh, while doing our practices, uh, not to not to see it materially? Because I have this feeling that, for example, there is this saying that. Uh, familiarity breeds uh, contempt and something similar happens here that that uh, when we come everything's uh, everything seems so spiritual and uh, as we start to do uh, somehow uh, really I, I also have this feeling that um, sometimes I, I do not properly uh, see things in, in the spiritual way, way but uh, rather a bit uh, materially. Yeah, we have a tendency to start to reapply what we're used to onto the relationships that we have with devotees and the, and the ingredients in devotional service. Like we learned that everything is spiritual. Everything belongs to the Lord. It's not our property. And so when we treat everything as the property of the Lord to be used for the service of the Lord, then we're in the right consciousness. If we treat things like people treat the material energy, then we develop material consciousness or ordinary consciousness. And we don't progress. It, it reminds me actually something which I lately read from uh, Bhaktivedya Purna Maharaj. Uh, and uh, he spoke about uh, uh, spiritual knowledge and uh, material knowledge. And uh, his point was that uh, many times uh, we, uh, we want material knowledge first. And based on that, uh, we want the spiritual knowledge. But he said that uh, material knowledge is not a problem if uh, spiritual knowledge comes first. And uh, then that is the basis for material knowledge, which helps us how to use properly things uh, in, in the service of the Lord. So it was a very interesting point for me. Yeah. Uh, Yasmin Vigyanta Sarvam Eva Vigyanta Bhavanti. One who knows Krishna knows everything. The more you become Krishna conscious, the more everything becomes clear. Because ultimately everything is included. The material energy is also Krishna's energy. Thank you very much for, for clarify, clarifying all this. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I just want to mention one thing on another level. Uh, Radhavino Dini? Yes. Um, I spoke with uh, Maria uh, Manasi Ganga, Manasi Ganga last night, and I encouraged her to uh, read Maharaj's book, Sankalpa Komodi. So I think she's planning to get a copy of it. So maybe you can contact her and maybe help her okay. purchase a copy. Um, 
Great, Dave. I found it online and ordered it. I don't know how long it will take, but I was able to find one online. Oh. Through his website. Yes. Oh, okay. That may take you about three weeks, but let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay, because uh, Radha Vinodini has direct access to the books. Oh, sh okay. Yeah. So I'll talk with her. Thank you. Yeah, if you can cancel your order without losing any money, and then maybe she can send it to you. You could just send her something directly. Okay. I I might uh, contact uh, Bhakti Devi Mataji, who is uh, responsible for all this, and, uh, and uh, we can arrange that I, I will... Uh, manage uh, posting the uh, the book and it might be sooner. Yeah, okay, you can put, thank you. yeah, push it through because it's something you should get to as soon as you can. Okay, thank you I so will, much. I will Both. ask Bhakti Devi. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, yeah, any other questions? <laughs> Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Archana, Siri, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, uh, I have read this past time, but I didn't realize how powerful it was. So thank you so much for covering this past time. For a couple of days, it really allows us to meditate on these past times. Um, so uh, my question, Guru Maharaj, is... Um, uh, uh, Chan Kazi was basically instructed by um, Narsimha Dev in his dream. Um, um, so I uh, can you please speak on uh, Krishna instructing through dreams um, to exalted souls? And we have so many um, examples like these. Even in Kali Yuga also this happens. So can you please speak on that? <laughs> well, I'm trying to think what I could add to it. I think you summed up the whole thing. The Lord, because for the Lord, the physical plane and the subtle plane are the same. He doesn't make a distinction between subtle plane and physical plane. So if he wants to instruct you, he can do it on any, any level. So sometimes he appears in dreams. And sometimes he sends his pure devotee in the dream also. But you should understand what is the nature of the instructions. Therefore, to confirm that actually it is something that is transcendental and not something that is just the mind's trickery, which also can be there also, too. And that, when people have asked Prabhupada, how do we know when Krishna appears in the dream, it's actually Krishna or is it some ghost or some something? Baba said Krishna will not do anything that he not, doesn't normally do as he explains in Shastra. He doesn't act differently. So that is the criteria for understanding like that. And so that may also require discussion. And I had a few examples with people telling me uh, you know, Prabhupada came to a dream, and then when I discussed with him, I, we found out, and we both concluded it wasn't Prabhupada, it was just somebody who appeared to take the form of Prabhupada in order to trick this person. So this can also happen. Uh, other beings can enter, in. but in many cases, we do get examples of the Lord and the Lord's pure devotees appearing in the dreams of a devotee. And that's also written in the Bhagavatam. I can tell you one verse. You can read about that directly. It's the sixth canto, fifth, uh, I'm sorry, sixth canto, 19th chapter, which is the last chapter in the sixth canto. Verse number five. And the Prabhupada speaks about how the Lord appears in dreams and gives instructions. Hmm. Yeah, 6.19.5. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, a um, lot of, we, we have also read that spiritual masters get dreams. 
um, if their disciples are not um, following the regulative principles. I mean, I remember you also sending some emails and reminding all the disciples about following the principles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Prabhupada writes that himself, and he's also, he also mentioned that to his devotees that I, you know, sometimes I have to see bad dreams because of the sinful activities of my disciples. Hmm. So the four regulative principles are what we're talking about. So those who break the four regulative principles, I mean, if they break one breaks one accidentally, that's one thing. But if one consi consistently breaks one, then that will impact both on the person, especially, and uh, there will be some subtle disturbances for the spirit of the and sometimes some physical disturbances also. So uh, there are two verses, one in the eighth canto and one in the ninth canto. Um, uh, that Prabhupada talks about, you know, how the spiritual master gets a reaction for the sinful activities of the disciple. Mm. Yeah, it's there. I can't remember the exact uh, verse, but I know it's eighth canto and ninth canto. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can send it again on the on the uh, conference. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Uh, I made an announcement at the very beginning, and I'll repeat the announcement now. I uh, just before our class began, I sent this link about vaccines discussed by one. Uh, doctor and another medical practitioner. It's quite eye-opening. Uh, it's about an hour long. It gets a little medically uh, technical in the middle part of the discussion, but both beginning and the end are very enlightening, especially the end. I would highly commend, highly encourage devotees to uh, watch that. If you're not on my uh, conference, then just send me an email and I'll send you the link directly. Okay. Oh, okay. You found it. A415. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very good. A devotee sometimes accepts a sinful person as a disciple and to counteract the sinful reactions he accepts from the disciple, he has to see a bad dream. Nonetheless, the spiritual master is so kind that in spite of having bad dreams due to a sinful disciple, he accepts some troublesome business for deliverance of the victims of Kali Yuga. Therefore, probably, yeah, but continue on. This is very important. The next part is just as important. After initiation, therefore, disciples should be extremely careful not to commit Again, any sinful act that may cause difficulty for himself and the spiritual master. Therefore, he must not again commit sinful acts and thus create a troublesome situation. Yeah. 8, 4, 15. I'm not sure the ninth canto verse, but there is one there also. I think it's 9, 3 something. I can't remember exactly. Okay, so we can stop here. And uh, tomorrow is Varaha Dave's appearance day. And today is Ikadasi. We're all fasting half a day in the morning to fast for tomorrow's 
Mahadwadasi, which is the appearance of um, Verhadev. Tomorrow morning you don't fast, but today you fast for Akali, for, for Verhadev. Okay. So those of you who are in the morning early hours, do not take anything until after 12 o'clock because today is a fast day and a courtesy. Uh, Guru Maharaj, just a quick question about that. After 12 noon, even if we have to take something, it has to still continue to be on the Ekadashi preparations, correct? Of course, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll uh, conclude here. Thank you very much. Stay healthy and watch that video I sent because it really opened my eyes to a lot of things, so. And you may question it, and that's good, but at least listen to it first, we'll look at it first before you question it. <laughs> okay, my obeisances to all the devotees, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for your valuable time and association. Uh, thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Uh, Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. ki jai. Anand Koti Vishnu Vrind ki jai. Jai. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my Thank you. Thank you so much for your class. Thank you, Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru. Guru Maharaj. Thank you. 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 Th